Professor Stephen Hawking passed away before the James Webb Space Telescope was deployed. But because of the late physicist's immense space legacy, certain hours of the new space telescope will be dedicated to verifying some of his ideas. One of these hypotheses is the very last one Hawking worked on before his death, in which he debated a multiverse hypothesis that suggests an exact copy of you exists in a parallel world. Sounds bizarre? Stephen Hawking's multiverse theory, which many scientists disputed, has now been verified by none other than JWST itself. But what's Stephen Hawking's multiverse hypothesis? What influence could it have on you? And how has the James Webb Space Telescope ultimately demonstrated the theory? Stay tuned as we walk you through all the answers which will surprise you. What exactly is the multiverse? Have you ever wondered whether there are other intelligent organisms in the cosmos other than Earth? While it may not sound so terrifying, what if there are clones of you scattered all around the universe? This is a form that looks and acts just like you. That may sound disturbing, but the notion is supported by one of the finest minds who has ever been involved in research, Stephen Hawking, the late professor. According to the idea of the multiverse, there may be duplicates of you out there that you are unaware of. A replica of this planet or star in the solar system, or the entire Milky Way galaxy for example, can exist elsewhere. Aside from these heavenly planets, your car, computer, or this video may also contain copies. Who is producing all of these copies and how many copies are possible? The debate over whether there are parallel universes dates back to the 4th century BCE. Epicurus, the ancient Greek philosopher, and Carl Sagan, whose public television series Cosmos introduced astronomical principles to a wide audience, were firmly on opposing sides of the dispute but had no observable detail on which to base their judgments. The debate has raged throughout the Middle Ages and Renaissance all the way up to the present day. Cosmologists John D. Barrow, Frank and J. Tepler, and others reacted to the anthropic cosmological principle, stating that even in a universe full of planets, creating life on one is difficult, and the transition from single-celled animals to large-brained mammals is a long one. Scientists believe we are finally on the verge of knowing whether or not we have intelligent neighbors in the cosmos and how adjacent they are to us. It's a noteworthy idea since it was the professor's final piece of research, which was submitted for publication just 10 days before his death. He set forward a theory on the creation of the universe in a paper titled A Smooth Exit from Eternal Inflation, which he co-authored with Thomas Hertog. What exactly is the multiverse theory? What did the late physicist think about it? According to the multiverse idea, our universe, with its hundreds of billions of galaxies and almost uncountable stars, spans tens of billions of light years, and may not be the only one. Instead, there may be plenty of distinct worlds from ours. This mind-bending idea argues that there may be an infinite number of universes, each with its own rules of physics, groups of stars and galaxies, and even intelligent civilizations. Inflation theory describes a fictitious event that occurred when our universe was only a fraction of a second old. Our universe's inflation is considered to have ceased some 14 billion years ago. It is likely that while inflation is ending in certain areas, it is continuing in others. Individual collages can pinch off from bigger, growing inflating institutions, resulting in an unending sea of everlasting inflation. Stephen Hawking proposes a paradigm for comprehending the world in his final publication that would make the universe limited, countable, and amenable to meaningful interaction through scientific instruments. He invited Hertog to join him in his attempt to master the cosmos. The two then collaborate to create a mechanism for transforming the concept of a multiverse into a cohesive, testable scientific framework. To prove them, all we've got to do is gaze back in time. When we talk about gazing back, we're talking about billions of years, all the way back to the Big Bang. As we said in the video, scientists now have technology that can achieve this. Astronomers have become fond of the Hubble Space Telescope, which deserves to be inducted into the Hall of Fame of Telescopes. The Hubble Space Telescope was put into orbit by the Space Shuttle Discovery in 1990. It captures clear images of celestial objects like planets, stars, and galaxies. Hubble has collected almost a million observations. These include comprehensive images of star formation and death, galaxies billions of light years distant, and comet fragments colliding with Jupiter's atmosphere. The main mirror of the Hubble Space Telescope can capture approximately 40,000 times more light in an object than the human eye can. 
The GNZ 11 galaxy, which is approximately 13.4 billion light years distant, is the furthest object spotted by Hubble. The Big Bang happened 13.7 billion years ago, so there is a 300 million year gap between that event and the depth to which the Hubble can bear. What's the role of the JWST? This is where the James Webb Space Telescope, the mother of all telescopes, kicks in. It features a large sunshield that measures 22 meters by 12 meters, nearly the size of a tennis court. It'll orbit the sun at up to 1.5 million kilometers per hour, reaching temperatures of minus 223 degrees Celsius. Its mission is to investigate the universe's earliest light and celestial objects that appeared immediately after the Big Bang. Interestingly, Hawking contributed to the theory that gave rise to the concept of endless parallel worlds. That is the perpetual inflation idea, although he conceded that the multiverse had never been a favorite of his. The standard theory of everlasting inflation predicts that globally, our universe is like an endless fractal with a mosaic of diverse pocket universes separated by an inflating ocean, he said in an interview. Local physics and chemistry rules can change from one pocket world to the next, forming a multiverse, but I've never been a fan of the multiverse. The notion cannot be tested if the scale of distinct worlds in the multiverse is huge or infinite. A novel hypothesis of perpetual inflation based on a barrier at the start of time. It was proposed that how the cosmos is similar to our own may have developed at that time. There may even be primordial gravitational waves that correspond to the universe's inflation. So, it's hardly unexpected that NASA has set aside funds to study parallel worlds. The search for a parallel universe where time runs backward led NASA to Antarctica, one of the world's coldest locations. The project was known colloquially as ANITA, although it stands for Antarctic Impulsive Transient Antenna, and it was carried out in collaboration with several partners, including the University of Hawaii. ANITA is a stratospheric balloon-based experiment that detects radio waves released by very rare high-energy neutrinos if they collide with an atom in the ice. ANITA, a radio telescope, is the first NASA observatory for neutrinos of any type. Neutrinos are of particular interest to astrophysicists since they are the only particles capable of reaching an attenuated state at all energies. The Ascarian effect is used by the ANITA device to detect these ultra-high energy neutrinos. This phenomenon anticipates the generation of coherent radio waves as a result of a cascade of particles created by our high-energy particle interaction. How can we leave Elon Musk out of this discussion? Elon Musk is another guy who believes in parallel worlds. It is hardly surprising that he is a science nerd as the CEO of SpaceX, a space exploration firm. He advocates for mankind to live permanently on Mars. While it is unlikely that we will encounter aliens on Mars, Musk does have some fascinating thoughts on the multiverse idea. Because we exist, Elon Musk believes we are most likely in a simulation. He made the remarks on a podcast with comedian Joe Rogan with whom he occasionally hangs out. Musk believes that the substrate or whatever is fueling the simulations is probably duller than the simulation itself. By simulation, he meant our Earth, while substrate means the more intellectual neighbors of ours, aka aliens or future men. According to him, most gamers play video games because the games are more engaging and adventurous than the real world. The same logic also applies in this case also. So the next time you get bored, don't complain. Now remember, Musk and Rogan both drank whiskey during the show. At one point, the anchor smoked a joint and Musk took a whiff. Jokes apart. Certain scientists contend that it is nothing more than a convenient technique to cover some explanatory gaps in our existing ideas. It is maintained that they do not belong to science and cannot even be tested until they can be proven or disproven. Several multiverse theorists aim to redefine science. They wish to abandon the scientific process and diminish the crucial link between theory and facts, pushing the need for proof to the margins. This misleads the public into believing that the hypothesis is established science, which will inevitably harm public perception and acceptance of its authority. Let us know what you think. Thanks for watching.